Hey, Paul here from the Hell Team Trials Workshop. Today we're going to be having a look at the Mizoki 40mm aluminium fork. These were found on Gas Gas, Joda Gas, Ossa, um, some Scorpa SYs and TY 175s, uh, 250s, and a bunch of other bikes. There's a bunch of stuff on the Hell Team website under the tech support section where you can find some interesting stuff on Mizoki. Um, fork oil levels, um, controls and other things we've collected over the years. But saying that, there wasn't any workshop manuals from Mizoki. So let's get in and have a look. We're going to start with the left leg because that's the simplest. Um, and we're going to just pull it apart and have a look how to change the seals and bushes on it. Here we've got a pretty rugged old set in a clamp that I use. Um, but there's lots of ways of holding these forks, but you've got to hold them softly. Here's some soft jaw pliers, aluminium versions and some, as you can see in the background, some rubber ones, they work well. Um, you've got to find some way you can hold both the lower and upper fork leg without doing it any damage. So yeah, number of choices there. Also, if you're stuck, some PVC pipe from the hardware store clamped in the vise. Anyway, we're, let's start with the top. We need to undo that. We've got some pin spanners. We've got a tool that I made myself. Um, you can use a number of things, but on the left hand leg, you can also use a 22mm shifter because that nut is just for looks. That's the tool that I made um, to make a job easier for ourselves, but yeah, that's going to be extreme because we work on them pretty often. Uh, get in there, unscrew the cap, they're never really done up that tight. Um, wind it off, and then we can start from here. So as soon as you can wind it off, you can pull the... What the... Okay, there should be a, a preload spacer there, and there's not. All we can see is the spring. So obviously you've got a problem. 17mm spanner. Let's get this cap off. Pull the spring down, lock it underneath that jam nut. 17mm on there, let the spring come back up. That holds it in place. Then you want a 22mm for the top. Hold that 17 to stop it going in a little tiny force and you'll release that 22mm at the top. Careful winding it off because you have the compression adjuster underneath which is a little fragile so just wind it off, pull it off vertically. See the compression adjuster at the back there? Yep. And we give that a little bit of a wind because it's in the middle of its movement and that whole rod you can carefully draw out. It's quite fragile so be careful. 17mm off, release the spring. Now you can take the spring out. Hopefully that preload spacer is still inside. Here's my little tool that I use, but you can use a screwdriver for releasing the dust seal. Just get under the edge of that dust seal, careful not to scratch those fork legs. Um, and just lift that dust seal away, they're pretty easily removed. Then the retaining clip, you see that un under there? See it's fixed in a circular groove. Lift it out carefully with a small screwdriver or a little pick again careful of those fork legs. Remove that out of the vise, drain the oil. Let's see, there's the preload spacer. That should have been on the other end of the spring. Drain all that oil out. I'd spend a while doing that. Um, six mil in the bottom of the fork. Um, you can use a T-bar like that, um, but I prefer to use a, a rattle gun. Just give that a quick little burst. That'll release the um, cartridge. Um, and there's the cartridge on the bench. And um, you need to give that a really good clean. Um, we'll go deeper into that. That's the cap that lives on the end of it. We'll go deeper into that in part two of this. Now you've done that, you can just use the upper fork leg, give it a good solid slide, it'll come out. Yep, uh, you can see the lower bush there on the upper fork stanchion. Um, now give that a good look, see if there's any scratches or that needs replacing. They're easily removed. I've got pretty thick fingernails, so I just jam my thumbnails in there and prise it apart because it's in a little groove. Um, but you can use a screwdriver. I'll show you how easy it is there. I'll just pop that out, a little bit of gentle persuasion and that comes away. Same when putting it back on again, just click it into that groove. You don't want to spread it too far because it's got to be a tight fit when you get it back into the lower fork stanchion. Here I'm just showing you with a screwdriver. Just gently put that screwdriver in and rotate it slightly. That'll be enough to get it out of the groove. Uh, now, see, you can see clearly now the fork oil seal and the bush just below it. I've put a torch in there so you can see that clearly. We need to get those out. 
So I've got a tool here that I use, but you can use a screwdriver. Just be really gentle with this edge. You don't want to force anything against it and mark that paintwork or put a ding in it. If you need to put a rag or a little bit of timber or something in there, this one came out pretty easily. Um, then there's a washer underneath, a nice thick washer. Uh, and then you can clearly see the, the bush there that the slider goes through. Uh, that's the bit we need to get out. The quick way I do this is I give it a little tiny bit of heat just to expand the aluminium. It only needs a few seconds on each side and I don't do it on the outside because of the paint. You can see there I do about three seconds, four seconds each side. That's just enough to warm it up. And then I turn it upside down and give it a quick tap on a block of wood. And because the aluminium expands much quicker than the metal bush, out it pops. Rookie mistake there from the cameraman. I turned the camera off when I was turning it on, but I'll show it clearly in part two when I do the right leg. Um, anyway, that's a really quick, easy way to get the bush out. Just use that heat expansion of the aluminium. It'll come out quickly. And now a quick one on reassembly. Uh, make sure you've cleaned all that out well. Slide that back in. Get that bottom screw in. Um, I use a rattle gun again, but you can use a T-bar. A uh, rattle gun seems to work quickly, just lifts it up nicely. Now that's inside the leap, you've put your new bush on your leg. Slide that in, be really careful this bit. Just give it a gentle massage back and forward and it'll slide through that gap that you've cleaned up. Um, and then just gently slide it down. Just leave a light bit of oil on everything. I don't mind getting my hands dirty on this because you just have a smear of oil on everything and it makes everything go together much nicer. Um, when that's home, then we move on to the next step. Uh, we've got the bushes. This is the trickiest bit to get together. Again, a smear of oil on these things. Put your new bush in. Then I like to use the old bush on top of it and then I put the washer on. This gives me a bit of room to tap these home. Now what I've done is warm that lower fork leg up, leg up again and I've had that bush in the freezer. So it, again, just a few taps of my 50 mil bit of conduit there and it slides in nicely. You have to take it out of the vise, get rid of the old bush and the washer there. But as you can see, that bush has slid into that gap really nicely. And that's just that differential in temperature. Just the warmth applied to the staunchion and the cold bush and it goes together. Put your washer in, a smear of grease around your oil seal. Make sure the open part of the oil seal is facing down towards the pressure. And then slide that again over the top. And then I'll use that same bit of 50ml conduit to push that home. They usually go in with Mazzocchi's pretty easy. They're not as tight as tech forks. So I'm sliding that bit of conduit over and I'm just pushing that home. That goes on really simply. Um, grab your clip that you've wiped clean, uh, bang that in there. Um, just be careful, again, using anything like I'm using there with a screwdriver that you do it gently and you stay away from that fork leg. You don't want any scratches in it. Um, fire the cameraman, yes, I forgot to show filling it up with oil. Um, anyway, that's what I used to fill it up with. I've put it in there, I've put oil into about a, probably 160, 170 from the top, and then I pump it up and down. Um, I'm, I've got that tool set at 160 mils, so when I pull on the syringe, if I've got enough oil in there, it pulls oil out, so I know I've set it at the right amount. So I want an air gap of 160 mils. Um, I'm pumping that rod up and down to get any air out of the cartridge again. Um, and then I'm drawing out, see I've got oil. So that'll keep drawing off the excess oil now until I get to that 160 mil air gap height. Um, this is all available in the tech section of our website. So printed copies of this if you need it. Um, then uh, uh, pull your rod up, put your spring on. Um, and then what we want to do is I use a, use a little shim washer there, uh, your preload spacer, 17 mil spanner, lock that in, then carefully with your compression rod, slide that back in. Um, we want to turn this in about halfway, so don't thread it all the way in. Um, as you can see there, I haven't pushed all the way home. Your cap on, and then we want to get that 22 mil again. Just lock that up with the 17 down below. Um, 
lift out, preload spacer sits in there nicely, pretty easily done. Wipe a bit of that oil off, and then we want to pull the upper fork leg up, screw it back in, uh, and we're done. Now that's the end of the left side. The right side is a little bit more tricky with the closed cartridge fork that it is, um, but we'll go to that in part two of this. Uh, I just need a bit more time to do a bit of editing. But yeah, hopefully see you soon for the next Trials Workshop video from the Hell Team.